Hello again, welcome back. Apologies for the uh, long, long delay on making this video. Um, so I was actually supposed to make this video back in like October 2021. I think that would have been my one year on uh, Lvance, Fivance, whatever you want to call it. But um, I just kind of didn't. So I've got round to it now. And um, the effects between October 2021 and now there's not really been any massive change, to be honest. So what I say now has applied back from one year onwards, I guess. So apologies for like these fucking huge spots on my face, by the way. Hideous. So in this video, I want to go over the long-term benefits and pros that I've seen from taking ADHD medication, in my case, Elvance, the associated costs and um, the frequency of checkups that I have to have nowadays compared to like when I last made the video, which was six months in, I think it was much more frequent then. So, um, and then lastly, I'll go over how the, uh, medications effects have changed. Um, that'll make more sense in a little while, I guess, cause it's not just the benefits or the, um, pros of the medication as such. So firstly, to go over the improvements that I've seen since taking the medication or since the last sort of check-in at six months. The biggest one is my ability to concentrate for longer periods of time now, whether that be like a conversation with someone or at uni, I'm back at uni now. Uh, I can just concentrate on that one thing for <clears throat> a good couple of hours and not get massively distracted. I still waver here and there, but I'd say on the whole, um, it's 10 times better than it was beforehand. Uh, the next one, and this was something that was definitely improved at the six month mark, to be honest, from day one, but it's just something that I notice more nowadays um, because of when I don't take my medication, but I'll come on to that in a minute. Um, it's just getting out of bed, getting up and going. I still take my Elvance an hour to an hour and a half before I need to be up. So if I'm up at half six, I'll set an alarm, wake up, take my meds at five, go back to sleep again. <clears throat> and then by sort of 45 minutes to an hour or so, I'll then be <clears throat> kind of awake, but kind of asleep between the two, a bit in limbo. But it just makes it so much easier to get out of bed when I actually need to. I can just get up and go. Um, but I never ever take my medication unless I've cocked up a bit. I never take my medication and then get up straight away because I just feel like shit for that first hour. So that's my way around the grogginess in the morning, I guess. And it also gives me a really good awareness of what I need to get done because when I'm in that kind of between state where I'm sort of not awake, not asleep, I'm just thinking about what the day is going to hold because whilst I'm laying there, I guess I'm like almost meditating. I don't know, maybe. I'm I'm thinking, but I'm not um I'm not overthinking. I'm in almost like a in the zone, like in a flow state. It doesn't I guess it doesn't reflect it entirely because I'm not even moving, but I'm straight thinking at that point. Um and I can think logically about what needs to be done throughout the day. And I'm sort of building a bit of momentum and sort of structure about how my day's going to look. Uh, leading on from that one as well, the next big thing is just my motivation to get things done in general. And I think a big part of that is because of that time that I spend in bed. It gives me the time to think about what needs to be done, like I was saying. Um, and with that at the back of my head or at the forefront of my head, <clears throat> it gives me the, whether it's motivation or... Um, guilt to get out of bed whatever it is majority of the time I can just think right that needs to be done and I've then got that motivation to get up and do it whereas unmedicated there's no way I would have been able to do that the last big improvement that I've seen and this has been quite an ongoing thing I guess that's potentially why it's now come up at the one year and beyond video um, is it just feels like I've got a much bigger bandwidth in terms of what I can actually pay attention to. 
So I used to be quite good at zoning in on one thing that I could pay attention to, but nothing else would come into my awareness whatsoever. It would be that one thing and everything else would just be blocked out. It's tunnel vision, like looking through a kaleidoscope almost. Whereas now if there's one or two conversations going on or if there's a lecture going on and someone's talking to me or asking me a question or something, I can pay attention to both things. So I've just got a bigger bandwidth of what I can actually take in um, and do something with as well. It's not, I'm just not taking it in and becoming overwhelmed with it. I can actually break it down and prioritize what I'm actually putting most of my attention into, if that makes sense. Uh, moving on now to the costs associated nowadays, a year onwards and the frequency of checkups that I have to have. So my treatment, I think it had done at the six month mark potentially, but my treatment's now completely through the NHS shared care scheme. So that means that my GP oversees the prescribing of my drugs as long as I um, submit body weight, blood pressure and heart rate every six months and there's no real variance in those compared to the last six months that I was on them. And that means that all I pay for is, because I have another medication that I collect, so with the two of them, if I was gonna pay the prescription charge, which is like nine pounds 15 or something, I'd end up paying what, like 18 pounds 30 for the two medications. So I just have like a prepayment thing every month that's 10 pounds and some pence. It's not too much, so it's, uh, it's almost half the price of paying for the medication separately but that's the only cost associated with like my regular medication prescription itself. The only other cost that there is now is with my original uh, consultant that I saw who made the diagnosis, I have to see them for a checkup. Uh, it's just a phone, phone call, like 10 or 15 minutes. It's either annually or I think it's now moved to biannually. That could be wrong, but um, it's yeah, like a really short phone call just to check everything's going okay. I think it's a bit of a money maker, but it's got to jump through some hoops, I guess. Um, it's like a hundred quid, I think, but it's very brief and I never need anything changing or haven't done thus far. So that's all good. So in terms of how the medication itself affects me nowadays, I kind of alluded to it earlier. In general, only positives to say about coming on to ADHD medication. Um, if I was being really super picky about things, when I have like a day or a weekend off of my medication, which I try to do at least every couple of months or so, it's usually when I've run out of medication, I'll take a couple of days off. When I have that, I feel extraordinarily tired and lethargic and unmotivated and this might just be my perception of it but it seems like it's worse than pre-medication but like I said it might just be my perception and actually how I'm feeling is just how I used to feel all the time whereas now coming from the place of being medicated on a daily basis when I don't have my medication it seems like such a shock feeling that tired and lethargic all the time so I don't know I don't know if that is actually like a true reflection of sort of a change of how the medication affects me or if that's just my perception of how I am on a daily basis and how pre-medication was so shit really so yeah that wraps up this uh this video um like I said on the whole still doing amazing on the medication. Um, thank you for everyone that's still been leaving questions and comments and things, even when I haven't been posting. Uh, I really appreciate it. I do still try to get back to people. I'm hovering in the background. So um, yeah, continue to do so if you've got any questions or anything. And I'll try and make another video sooner than whatever, like 18 months since the last one or whatever it's been. So um, yeah, that's all. Hope you're all having a good start to 2023 and yeah, check in again soon. Ciao.